Hello, and welcome to the presentation of the paper Analyzing Ref Signals for the Interspeech 2020 Campaign Challenge. Human respiratory and speech parameters provide important cues to physicians and first responders in determining a wide range of cardiac and respiratory diseases or to evaluate cognitive and neurological health. Furthermore, information extracted from breathing patterns during speech can be used to assist speech therapists in identifying speech impediments resulting from unfavorable respiratory planning. Breathing monitoring in this context is often conducted using wearable sensors, namely face masks and non respiratory belts. The installation of these sensors require the presence of trained medical assistants and is time consuming and uncomfortable to wear. This means such information cannot be obtained during emergency situations or when the patient cannot be physically reached. Automated methods based on recorded speech alone that can predict breathing patterns and parameters such as the breathing rate may be of value. A typical example occurs during online consultations with the patient at home when breathing information can be of use for diagnosis or monitoring. Another example is when a patient calls an emergency number and the operator can objectively measure severity by monitoring the breathing rate, for instance. The experiments for the breathing sub challenge are conducted using a subset of the UCL speech breath monitoring database. The database contains 49 sessions, each four minutes in length. Each session belongs to a single native English speaker of ages ranging from 18 to 55 years old. 29 of these are female and 20 are male. To the best of our knowledge, all speakers were healthy. The corpus is then split into training, development and test sets, the 17, 16 and 16 sessions respectively. The dataset includes speech recorded from a head-mounted condenser microphone and normalized near voltage readings from two respiratory belts that respond to changes to the thoracic circumference. All speech recordings were spontaneous, as reading tasks may introduce some biases, forcing stops that do not necessarily coincide with the breathing room. When comparing baseline results of the development set with the test set, we noted a large performance gain, measured by the Pearson correlation coefficient, which motivated us to inspect the performance of each session individually. As you can see in this table, we detected large performance differences. Half of the development set reports performances similar to the test set, but others report a very low correlation coefficient. So, in order to understand these results, we analyze the breath signals individually. Here is an example comparison of one of the low performing sessions on top, with what we find to be a regular one on the bottom. Intuitively, a breath signal presents itself as segments of a monotonal decreasing signal, corresponding to speech which is reserved from the lungs to be produced. When a person breathes in, the signal will increase with a peak before decreasing again. This is what we see on the session four, with some small artifacts related to noise and forced expirations. However, when looking at session zero, we do not detect these patterns. Like session zero, we detected quite a level of breath patterns on other sessions with low performances, which are not marked in bold. We also found similar breathing patterns on two sessions of the training set. For this reason, we also report results on a development set that excludes the, these development sessions which we call DEV2. The challenge dataset was obtained by recording speech and breathing signals in a controlled environment that does not accurately translate into telemedicine. So in order to emulate the video call consultation with the physician, we augmented the provided challenge dataset. This augmentation consists in passing the original downsampled speech signal by a code excited linear prediction coder and decoder, which is widely used in VoIP applications. After the decoding, the signal is upsampled by 16 kilohertz and is used in training alongside with the challenge data sets, with results being presented on the augmented development set as DevOck. The official provided end-to-end -end baseline architecture was used as a base for all of our experiments. This architecture follows typical sequence labeling models by combining a CNN for character level presentation with an RNN, which in our case was an RSTN, for obtaining context. The output of these slides is then fed to a dense life final prediction. The training loss used the Pearson correlation coefficient R, calculated between the true and predicted belt signals. One of the approaches we proposed was a bidirectional RSTM. This allows us to model respiratory planning, which by intuition considers not only how long was the last breath, which is past information, but also when we plan to stop talking in order to breathe in again, which is future information. As expected, Average results are considerably higher for the reduced dataset and are comparable to test set results. 
We also know that while the BLSTM yielded better results on the in development, it failed to outperform the baseline on the test set. Here we illustrate the system's ability to correctly predict breathing patterns in voice of IP conditions. In this experiment, the true breathing signal is compared with the one predicted from a signal obtained by passing a session through a real VoIP scenario. The other recording is transmitted over the air using my mobile phone and recorded using Skype platform, which is the silk audio compression and codec, similar to the one we used on augmentation. The results on the augmented data set do not show consistent differences in performance when compared to the challenge data sets, something we didn't detect either when looking at the results of each development session individually. This indicates that there is no information lost regarding breathing events when passing speech signals through the VoIP audio codec. As part of this analysis, and motivated by previous work on the carrier nature of speech signals, we investigate the use of the amplitude modulated and frequency modulated components of the speech signal for predicting breathing signals. The M component contains only information related to the message, while the FM component contains information related to the speaker. As such, by using only the message component of the speech signal, we investigated the separation of information in proofs of our prediction. The AM FM decomposition is conducted using a frequency domain with a prediction approach. FDLP proposes to model the speech in critical bands as a modulated signal with the AM component obtained using the Hilbert envelope estimate and the FM component obtained from the Hilbert carrier. The spectrogram illustrates the contents of the two components in the presence of a breathing signal. So let's listen to an excerpt of the original signal. I didn't have any income, which wasn't great, and um, which kind of makes living in London quite... So let's listen to the FM as well. The synthesized signal sounds messageless, but with identifiable speaker cues, namely pitch and voice quality features such as creakiness. In the spectrogram, the FM carrier signal clearly shows a breath signal between the two words whose voicing patterns are visible. Now let's listen to the air. Income, which wasn't great, and which kind of makes living in London quite the signal contains a resynthesized signal with the intact message, but with whispered speech. In the spectrogram, the signal exhibits longer pauses between the corresponding words. This was the motivation for a set of experiments on predicting breath signals from the raw time wave representation of the envelope, the carrier, or combinations of these with and without the original signal. Now on, on to some results. No improvements were detected when using only the carrier or the envelope signal. The exception to this being the performance gain on the BLSDM AM model when compared to the BLSDM original, which is residual. All experiments indicate the performance using only the AM signal yield the best results when compared to the FM signal. This can be explained by the fact that the AM component re retains most of the information relevant for detecting breathing patterns, which is the message. The performance degradation on the AM component when compared to the original signal can be explained by the fact that the relevant information is carried by the Hilbert FEM carrier instead, such as voice breathing events that appear on the envelope as silence. The combination of the AM and FM components, or even one including the original signal, failed to outperform the BLSTM system with the original audio and the challenges baseline. This indicates that the availability of the various representations during training does not actually improve results. Another topic we explored was breathing rate estimation. Breathing events are characterized in a breathing signal as a peak value. Previous attempts to detect these events typically include the detection of zero crossings and thresholding of the signal using its first and second derivatives. In this work, we use a slightly different approach. If we consider breath as a quasi-periodic signal, the typical respiratory rate for a healthy human at rest is between 12 to 18 breaths per minute. Then the resulting cyclic characteristics of the correlation will be equal to the original signal. As such, the average time differences between the peaks of the autocorrelation report the short period of the signal, which roughly corresponds to the periodicity of breath. This period will then be used as a stride of a window that will detect the local maximus of the original signal. However, breathing events can also be detected using speech directly. An example of this is using a breathing event detection algorithm based on an ASL system. The system was trained on the English helpful dataset using Calding. The acoustic model is a TDNM, 
and the language model was trained on a mix of broadcast transcriptions and web news corpora. Here we compare the behavior of the ESR system with the AM and FM components. This segment was chosen as it shows limitations of the different systems. We note that by using the generic labels, the SR system is unable to differentiate between voiced exhalation and voiced inhalation, and that does not detect unvoiced inhalations. Furthermore, the system trained with the FM components is unable to detect these voiced exhalations. Considering no actual breathing rates were provided for each session, the results obtained from the predicted signals using our best system are compared against the breathing rate estimations of the true signals. We note that the range of values of breathing rate for the labels is much higher than the ones estimated using the predicted breath signal. Considering the human breathing rate for conversational speech is below 0.2, the presence of outliers in the true signals, which correspond to the regular sessions previously identified, confirm that some of these signals do not accurately represent breathing patterns. Now for some conclusions. In this work, we analyzed and automatically predicted breathing patterns from speech using signals extracted from respiratory balance as ground truth. As a result of this analysis, we detected regular patterns on several files. We then studied the applicability of the AMF and the composition of speech to do the same task. We found that while the decomposed signal components did not surpass the performance of the original signal, our experiments support the hypothesis that breathing signals are dependent on the message since individually the results obtained with the AM components were able to outperform those obtained with just the FM components. In order to simulate the conditions of medical consultations over the internet, the challenge dataset was augmented by passing it through a VoIP coder decoder. For future work, our goal is to explore additional parameters that can be extracted from breathing patterns, such as volumetric information, for example, tidal volume. Additionally, given how breathing provides important markers to several medical conditions, such as cardiac, respiratory, and neurological diseases, we plan to explore speech-derived breathing patterns for assisting in the automatic detection of these conditions. Here are some references that we use in our work. And thank you for your attention.